Hey guys, this is Brian. Um, I am going to show you some more details on doing some editing on the um, model photo that we took. So we took this photo outside um, of school actually in this little planters and we're going to um, edit out some of the background. So what I started doing here is making a, uh, a path uh, mask for uh, stripping out the background and um, I already started this just so we can speed this up. You can see here I'm kind of not lined up so I'm going to go to my path tool and add another point with this little plus tool. Um, I think I'll add one there and maybe one about right there um, and then go back and get these a little closer in there. And we're going to be using a, a mask instead of uh, deleting this so that we can go back and edit stuff if we didn't quite get it all right. So this is a path of the first chunk and let's go ahead and take a look at that. Let me uh, move this this one in a little bit over there. All right so I made this path but the, it's important to save these paths so um, it says path one if you double click on that give it a name um, call this uh, mask. Now that'll save that so I can click it off and I can click it back on and it's in there permanently. If I don't do that they go away after uh, um, after I click off of them. So I'm going to do that mask and there's two ways to do this but I'm going to make a selection by clicking on this and saying make selection and I wanted this to be a little fuzzy so we're going to use a um, let's say a two pixel radius. It depends on the resolution of your photo. This is a high resolution photo. Maybe I'd only use one pixel if you have like a cell phone type picture. Um, so I've got this selection. Now here's the important part. I don't want to delete this. I'm going to go back up to my layers which is over here. Um, so this is the layer I have and what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this little mat, quick mask button. Um, it's going to go backwards, but we can flip it, and I'll show you in a second. So I'm going to delete. So this is the exact opposite of what I want. I want the rest of it, and I want this hole right where I did this mask. Um, so if you notice that the mask itself, this is uh, the mask, this little black one, <clears throat> uh, it has this kind of square around it. If I click on this one, I'm editing the picture. So I'm going to go back to this, so I'm just editing the mask. And I'm going to go up and say uh, image. No, let's see. Blah, 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 blah. I think it's mode adjustment. Sorry, invert. So I just inverted that mask. So now the black parts are white and the white parts are black. And now I've got this hole right here and a little bit of a soft edge. And that actually looks pretty good. And the reason I only did this section was I was having troubles um, masking this with this tool down below because there wasn't enough contrast. But there's plenty of contrast up here so watch what happens. I'll just use this quick mask and that looks pretty good. It got all that and I'll move over here. That looks pretty good and just need that little extra piece. And here's the the trick. So I just I, yeah, I was in this layer with the photograph. Now I gotta go back over to the mask and I want to make that you can see the parts that are black are hollow so I want to make all this stuff I selected black in the mask. And so I've got this set up so that the foreground is white and the background is black. If it wasn't, I can click on this little um, icon up here. And now if I just hit delete, but I gotta make sure I'm in this mask mode. I'm gonna delete that. Now I'm not deleting the picture, I'm deleting the part of the mask. And let's just double check that. I'm gonna use Command D to deselect. Um, I can option or sorry control click on this mask and say disable the mask for a minute and there's all my information still there. So now I will click on it again and enable it and we need to have this last little section to do and I think this one we might be able to use our magic tool but see how the tones are really close here in the arm and so it may or may not work but let's give it a shot. Okay. It's pretty close, but you can see it didn't quite get there, so I'll use my uh, lasso tool and just get those last little edges. And um, so I'm going to go in here and holding down Option to add to this selection. 
I'm going to go in there and uh, scroll up to this corner. Oh, and this part I want to do the opposite. I'm going to hold down, um, instead of control option, and I get this little minus tool so that I can deselect part of this mask. So there's the um, little chunk I just have now. Let me scroll this in so we can see. And now I've got to go back to my layers, which is here. Click back on my mask, and I'm going to delete that as well. So now I've got this nice mask of this whole area. But you notice over here, that's pretty funky. The nice thing about this, um, oh, my palettes are right in the way. Let's go over here. Nice thing about the mask is I can actually go back into that mask and even paint in there. So I'll use a paintbrush. Um, clicking on this, I want a hard edge brush though, so I'll try this 25. And so watch what happens if I paint, I'm painting back out. I'm gonna flip this, so I'm painting black in the mask. And I can trim this up a little bit, just with my brush. And if I go too far, um, what I was uh, saying in the class is I want to switch these two colors around. I'm clicking on this little uh, arrow thing here, but I can also use the X key. X will swap your uh, foreground palettes and the background palette. So, for example, whoops, I did too much. I just hit X. Now I've got my opposite colors and paint that back in up to this point. So there's three different ways I showed you how to work on this mask. Um, and now let's get our background picture. And so what we did is we had uh, this fire. So we brought this into Photoshop and I'm gonna pull this out so I can grab it. And this photo is actually from the internet, so it's really small, but since we want a blurry background, um, it's gonna be okay. So well, sometimes what I do is I can either grab it right here from the image or from the um, layers palette. But I'm gonna hold down shift and that puts it in the center of the when I drop it, it goes into the center. And this is on top too, so we wanna put it behind, but first let's scale this up. That looks ridiculously small, right? But Command T brings up my um, resize options. I'm holding Shift down to keep it constrained because we don't wanna accidentally make this too uh, skewed. Uh, let me zoom in a little bit more. And I need to go a little bit more. And I'm going to hit return. And there it renders out. All right, now I need to move this. So I'm going to click on this layer and push it down behind that layer. So we've got fire in the background. Now what I did in class is I, um, I wanted the background to be even blurrier. But I did this extra little step where first making sure I'm this is one thing in Photoshop, it's really easy to be in the wrong layer and not be aware of that. But um, So I select the fire layer, I'm going to go to my filters, and to the last one it says other, and I'm going to say maximum. And what this does is it kind of blows out, and let's go really radical so you can see. It takes all the light parts and make the, makes kind of a halo around those. And I don't want to go that much, I want to do just a little bit. Again, depends on the resolution that you're working at. So in this case, I'll say six. That gives this kind of nice little halo effect around all the stuff, which looks more like a camera does when it um, blurs stuff in the background. So that's the first step, but they're, they're kind of squarish if you look really close. Um, and I want them more round. So I can do two things. I can uh, use my filters and I want to, um, I forget what it is, blur. Yeah, let's just blur it, glossy and blur. So I want my blur to be a little bit more than my, um, I, so I did six pixels on the last one and I think I just did seven or eight there. So now I got this kind of fuzzy background and then my object stands out more in the foreground. Um, but wait, we're not done. So um, let's take this from here. I wanna put a couple things. I wanna see if I can put a log down in here, make this look a little bit more natural because that was actually just a, like a two by four. So um, I got this log texture. I'm going to see this may or may not work, but let's give it a shot. So I'm just going to grab some of this and I'm just doing a quick selection. This was on the beach. This is actually good that it has kind of 
very flat lighting so I can use it for um, my own advantage. So I'm going to copy that, go back to my other one, and um, let's throw this in here. Again, it's a little bit small, but I think we could probably make it work. So I am just futzing around here. Let's see. I'm just going to stretch this out. In this case, I don't care too much about my, um, I like that little chip in there, so I'm going to see if I can get that. Um, I don't care about the proportions of it because I'm uh, all right so there's the beginnings but I just want some of this texture I don't need the whole log in all its glory so I'm gonna try some of my um, filters let's try screen and see what happens no uh, overlay yeah that looks pretty good uh, and I'll cut that opacity down a little bit so it's not quite so Um, radical and I might even come in here and um, with a very uh, we'll make our own mask here let's try that all right so so this layer itself I'm gonna do the same thing I'm gonna click on this little mask tool now I don't have anything selected so nothing happened yet but I've got a white background that if I paint in there or make a selection or whatever um, you'll start to see it. But what I'm, I'm actually going to go back to this layer. I'm going to hide that just for a second. I'm going to select the axe blade so I'm in this layer so that I can make a selection from that layer. Because I need to drop that out. Let's get in here a little closer. And you can see when you do these magic selections you see that it's pretty funky edge here so it routinely requires that you go in and clean up. So again, using, um, I'm holding down Option to delete from this selection or Control to add to it. So I'm just going way in here and clean up this edge. This would be one that it would be much better to um, make with the path tools. Oops. Now I want to do Control, nope, sorry, Shift to add to it. Okay, so there's shift and shift. And all I'm really caring about is this lower section. So I'm gonna go back to my log and then click on the mask portion of this. And I can paint in here or I can, let's see what happens if I just delete. There we go. So this looks pretty good, except for there's something weird that feels like the texture is going the wrong way. So. I'm going to unlink the mask. So I'm going to leave the mask there, and now I can move the um, uh, the texture around. I'm going to see if I just flip this around, if that looks any better. So um, let's go Command-T and just flip this 100%. Yeah, that feels like the direction of the curve is going a little bit better. And we'll bring this down to somewhere in there. And let me go back up with my opacity just for fun. And instead of doing the opacity there, I'm going to play with the opacity just by airbrushing some uh, black in there. So, um, so this shows me, like I just picked a big airbrush, but this shows me on the screen the size of my brush. I can use the bracket keys to make it larger and smaller up and down. So I'm going to do that, and, but you have to make sure your caps key, uh, caps lock is off. If my caps locks is on, uh, I get this precision cursor, which doesn't show me how big the brush is. So caps lock is off. I made a big brush, and I'm going to paint some black into my mask so that I can kind of fade out some of this texture in places because I don't need so much of it. And I want it to be a little bit wavery. Yeah, maybe I went too far, so I'll flip it to white 
and I'll paint it back in where I feel like it's a little too fuzzy. So that's looking pretty good. Um, there's one other thing I wanted to do. I just want to show you, like, if I wanted to go in to modify my uh, design, for example, I'm going to add a little chamfer along here, and I'll do that with the path tool again. So I'm going to make a new path. So let's say new path. We'll call this um, edge. And I'll go to my path tool and select the pen tool. And what I want to do is I want to start up in this corner and I'm going to make a kind of offset chamfer. And I can go back in and edit these a little bit, move them around, get them all lined up exactly where I want. And just like an illustrator, if I hold down, um, I think options, I can start a new direction. And so I did that maybe one more over here and I'm gonna hold on to option and drag the other way and come backwards and when I click on this I want to hold down options again too so I can create two different uh, directions on the point and I'm gonna use this little arrow tool to come back in and even edit a little further get this nice and pointy there this all looks good. And I kind of like this little sweep here. So I'm going to keep that, but maybe bring this down just a little bit. All right. That looks good. Okay, so I've got my edge. Now, if um, I just clicked off of it, so it went away, but I'm going to click back on it. And I'm going to make a selection. And this brings up a palette. And so I want, um, it looks kind of soft in there. So two pixels is probably good. I can say new selection. And now I'm going to go back to my big airbrush and bracket down a little bit smaller. And this is really important. I want to sample colors off of my actual object. So I'm going to sample this kind of nice blue color and get a highlight running down here. And then I'm going to sample some of this color about there. And eh, it's too dark. Let's get this color and we'll come in here and Maybe I'll even go to pure white just for a second and come down and do some little kind of highlights like this is precision milled. And I meant to do this on its own layer so I could mess around with it, but um, if I do command H, I can hide these little marching ants to see what it looks like. And I can see that it's pretty good, but this part here is getting lost. so. I am going to get a little bit of that white bracket down, a little bit of white along that edge. And I'm gonna go back in and get some more of this blue. And get in here so that that white really stands out. And I could still paint in here even with those little, whoops, uh, hidden selection. And I think what I need is some more white. So let's go back here to white, get this a little more highlighty. And that also brings a kind of focal point forward. And um, let's see. Oh, the other thing I was going to do is take the um, this object and a lot of times in photography, the, the blacks get kind of filled in. So I'm going to um, go to my adjustment layer, and I'm just, just got the photo fix selected. And I'm going to go to this thing called shadows and highlights. And watch what happens. I'm going to, you see how the highlights, or sorry, the shadows actually really lightened up, but the highlights don't get affected. So it's just affecting the lower end. And, and if I go way out, you know, I can get some radical change, but I don't want it that much. I, I don't mind the fact that it's in shadow because the... So I just want to go up a little bit. I'm going up maybe six, let's say. And then I might go in here with my little healing brush, spot healing brush. Make sure this is kind of small. Bracket up. I just want to get rid of all these little highlights in here that are distracting. So 
I'm just brushing a little bit right in these little tiny spots. And last part is I want to add a little bit of leather texture and leather um, stitching. So uh, I found some stock photo with some stitches in there and I'm going to see if I can kind of utilize some of this into the picture. So I'm going to grab this off, drag it into my picture. And again, it's pretty small, but that's okay. We're just going to use a hint of this. So let's, um, first of all, I want it to look like it's up on the top surface. So I'm going to skew it a little bit. Yeah, dot, this is, keeps it on. So I'm going to take that, I'm going to trim off the edges here. And let's say here, we'll, we'll get rid of all that other stuff in a minute. In fact, here, let's use our little healing brush and we'll erase our shutter stock. <laughs> really, I just want the stitches, so. Um, so that's pretty good. And then um, I'm going to skew this. So I'm going to go to image, sorry, into edit transform and actually what's better than skewing is distorting what distort does is it gives you these four corners and I can you can see I can actually get stuff that kind of look like it's in perspective so I want it up on the top surface get a little perspective going I make it a little bit longer than it needs to be widen it out enough to see it And there's a little hint of the stitches. And now I'm going to do the same thing. This is its own layer. So I'm going to make a layer mask. And I'm going to airbrush out the, the edges. So bracket down. We want this to kind of blend in. And then last thing, I might just change it to, uh, let's try some different modes. Let's try overlay. There's a little hint, it's a little dark. Um, let's try lighten. Yeah, that's a little too much. We could do that and then turn the opacity down. So there's a bunch of different ways you can kind of approach it. Um, Um, I will erase, oops, I keep on going in the wrong layer. I am in here. There we go. So I don't want any sharp edges. There's a little hint of the leather tool. And let's, let's, um, just for fun, see if we can throw some le leather texture onto the surface. So I'll go back over, where did my leather go? Here's some leather surface. So we'll drag this into Photoshop. We're almost done. This is huge, by the way. So let's pull this off. Throw this in here. And texture looks about right. I'm going to turn this off first and make a. Uh, uh, I'm going to do this pretty quick and rough, but let's get a good feathered pixel radius. Um, let's say five pixels. And I'm just going to do a quick selection of where this goes. I'm just going to do it on this side. And then a quick selection over here. And we'll adjust it in the mask layer. Uh, so now I'm going to turn this back on. And we're going to do our quick mask. And that, of course, looks horrible, but we're going to turn this way down. So it's just a hint. Something about like that. And again, let's maybe airbrush out a little bit more of that. So um, I'm gonna, yeah, it actually doesn't look too bad. Um, I could take a little chunk of that and do the skew thing too. So I'm gonna take a little chunk of the back here. Oops, copy that. And we're gonna skew it onto that surface. So I'm gonna paste it into its new layer. And that's 
don't need that much. Let's get just a little tiny chunk, about that much. About that much. I'm just trying to imagine what it would look like if it wasn't distorted. And then I'll use my distort tool, edit, transform, distort. And again, if I just grab these points and put them on the four corners, I can actually get some perspective on this. So there it is again. This is a whole new layer, so I'm going to turn the opacity way down on that too. And the texture looks a little smaller than the other texture. Uh, so I'm going to size that up a little bit and cut off a little bit more. So stretch it out to it's about the right size as the rest of that. And let's go back in here and trim off some of oops. that. And this. Actually, no, that wasn't too bad down there. So I'm going to undo that and just trim off the edge. And let's do one last little section up here. And this one is catching a highlight, so that one's going to be kind of important. Ah, sorry. Photoshop. Here's my leather. So let's get a little tiny section uh, like that. Copy that. And paste this one here. And um, adjustments. Sorry, do the wrong thing. Uh, transform. Distort. Okay, so now I'm gonna grab these one, two, three, and four. And again, that looks a little too small in the texture. And this time I'm going to try something maybe lighten only. No, that looks, well, let's go down in opacity as well. well maybe that's not too bad. And instead of doing the whole mask on this uh, layer, I'm just going to delete some of this as well. So I got a little leather texture. Um, I'd go in here and probably edit, fix up that logo a little bit. Um, let's do one more nice highlight on this edge and then we'll be done, I think. So this one I'm just gonna do by hand, but I wanna get a nice highlight running through here. And this time, instead of airbrushing on there, I'm gonna use the um, lighten tool. There's the, these two are lighten and darken. Lighten looks like a lollipop, and then the darken is a little pinching hand. So I'm going to bracket up, and I'm just going to lighten up one end of this, or maybe more in the middle. Oh, that's pretty intense. Uh, turn the exposure down. And I'm going to turn, go Command H to hide those. Uh, yeah, it looks good. And let's do that right on this back edge too, so we can get this really nice. Um, so I'm gonna go to one pixel radius now. And I'm holding down option with my lasso tool and just clicking points, and this gives me more straight lines. It's good for, you know, when I have long straight sections, it's easier then. And I'm gonna come back in with my lollipop tool and go command H to hide those lines and just really lighten up that one little edge up here. And it's not quite going as far as I want so let's try airbrushing some white on there. Looks like it's a nice crisp little shine there. And we'll save this. 
Looks pretty awesome. All right, now I'm going to sign out here. Thank you for watching.